just before the break, uh, not sure if you noticed it, but something nasty started to happen. So we've been going along with these streams and divorcing, divorcing time in the programs from time in the computers. And all that, all that divorcing got hidden inside the streams. And then at the very end, we saw that sometimes, in order to really take advantage of this method, you have to pull out other delays. You have to write some explicit delays that are not hidden inside that constraint. And I did a very simple example with differential equations. But if you have some very complicated system with all kinds of self-loops, it becomes very, very difficult to see where you need those delays. And if you leave them out by mistake, it becomes very, very difficult to see why the thing maybe isn't working. So that's, that's kind of a mess that by getting this power and allowing us to use delay, we, we end up with some very complicated programming sometimes, because it can't all be hidden inside those streams. Well, is there a way out of that? Yeah, there is a way out of that. We could change the language so that all procedures acted like constream, so that every procedure automatically has an implicit delay around its arguments. And what would that mean? That would mean when you call a procedure, the arguments wouldn't get evaluated. Instead, they'd only be evaluated when you need them. So they might be passed off to some other procedure, which wouldn't evaluate them either. So all these procedures would be passing promises around. And then finally, maybe when you finally got down to having to look at the value of something that was handed to a primitive operator, would you actually start calling in all those promises? If we did that, see, since everything would have a uniform delay, then you wouldn't have to write any explicit delays, because it would be automatically built into the way the language works. Or another way to say that, technically what I'm describing is what's called, if we did that, our language would be so-called normal order evaluation language versus what we've actually been working with, which is called applicative order. versus applicative order evaluation. And remember the substitution model for applicative order. It says when you go and evaluate a combination, you find the values of all the pieces. Right? You evaluate the arguments, and then you substitute them in the body of the procedure. Normal order says, no, don't do that. What you do is effectively substitute in the body of the procedure, but instead of evaluating the arguments, you just put a promise to compute them there. Or another way to say that is you take the expressions for the arguments, if you like, and substitute them in the body of the procedure and go on. And never really simplify anything until you get down to a primitive operator. So that would be a normal order language. Well, why don't we do that? See, if we did, we'd get all the advantages of delayed evaluation with none of the mess. In fact, if we did that and const was just a delayed procedure, that would make const the same as const stream. We wouldn't need streams at all because lists would automatically be streams. That's how lists would behave. And all data structures would behave that way. Everything would behave that way. Right? You'd, never, you'd never really do any computation until you actually needed the answer. Right? And you wouldn't have to worry about all these explicit annoying delays. Well, why don't we do that? First of all, I should say people do do that. There's some very, very beautiful languages. One of the, one of the very nicest is a language called Miranda, which is uh, developed by David Turner at the University of Kent. And that's how this language works. It's a normal order language. And, and its data structures, which look like lists, are actually streams. And you write ordinary procedures in Miranda, and they, they do these prime things and these eight queens things just without anything special. It's all, it's all built in there. But there's a price. Remember how we got here. We're, we're decoupling time in the programs from time in the machines. And if we put delay, that sort of decouples it everywhere, not just in streams. Remember what we're trying to do. We're trying to think about programming as a way to specify processes. And if we give up too much time, our language becomes more elegant, but becomes a little bit less expressive. There are certain distinctions that we can't draw. One of them, for instance, is iteration. Remember. It's sort of this old procedure, right? Iterative factorial that we looked at quite a long time ago. Right? Iterative factorial had a thing and it said there was an internal procedure and there was a state which was a product and a counter. 
and we iterate that going around the loop. And we said that was an iterative procedure because it didn't build up state. Because and the reason it didn't build up state is because this iter that's called is just passing these things around to itself. Or in the substitution model that you could see in the substitution model that Jerry did, that in an iterative procedure, that state doesn't have to grow. And in fact, we said it doesn't, so this is an iteration. But now think about this exact same text if we had a normal order language. What would happen is this would no longer be an iterative procedure. And if you really think about the details of the substitution model, which I, I'm not going to do here, this expression would grow. Why would it grow? It's because when iter calls itself, it calls itself with this product. If it's a normal order language, that multiplication is not going to get done. It's going to say, I'm going to call myself with a promise to compute this product. And now iter goes around again. And I'm going to call myself with a promise to compute this product where now one of the, one of the um, factors is a promise. And I call myself again. And if you write out the substitution model for that iterative process, you'll see exactly the same growth in state. All those promises that are getting remembered that have to get called in at the very end. So one of, the, one of the disadvantages is that you can't really express iteration. Maybe that's a little theoretical reason why not. But in fact, people who are going, trying to write real operating systems in these languages are running into exactly these kinds of problems. Like it's perfectly possible to uh, implement a text editor in languages like these. But after you work a while, uh, you suddenly have three megabytes of stuff, which is which is, I guess they call them the, the dragging tail problem, the people who are looking at these, of stuff of promises that sort of haven't been called in because you couldn't quite express an iteration. And one of, the, uh, one of the research questions in these kinds of languages are figuring out the right compiler technology to get rid of the so-called dragging tails. It's not, it's not simple. <laughs>